Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be reviewing the 2020 MacBook Air 13 inch. And because I'm a fan of upfront conclusions and saving you time, I'm just gonna come out and say, if you're in the market for a laptop, then this is probably the laptop that you should get because it's amazing in absolutely every single way, except for one, which I'll talk about later in the video. And honestly, in addition to the 15 inch MacBook Pro and my 12.9 inch iPad Pro, I would consider just buying one of these just as an everyday carry sort of thing because this MacBook Pro is a bit big. The iPad Pro is good, but it doesn't, it's not quite a laptop replacement just yet. More on that in a future video. But this is just, just absolutely perfect. It's a great size to carry around. It's the absolutely perfect laptop if you're interested in doing basic things. And that's gonna be the main point in this video that this is a perfect laptop if you're doing basic things. And so if you're in the market for one of these laptops, you wanna be asking yourself, right, feasibly, what are my use cases for a laptop? And preferably we want a laptop that's gonna be lasting us at least three years, if not more. So you also wanna ask yourself, can I feasibly envision myself only having basic computer needs for the next three or four years? So what do I mean by basic things? I basically mean anything that's not particularly fancy. So, you know, things like browsing the web or watching Netflix or typing up a Word document or watching Ali Abdal videos on YouTube or making a PowerPoint presentation for work or school or, you know, crunching some numbers in Microsoft Excel or in Google Sheets or watching an Ali Abdal class on Skillshare or sending and receiving email or doing the occasional Zoom call or maybe even watching other videos on other websites. Those are all fairly basic things that this MacBook Air does absolutely amazingly. But if you're thinking of doing not very basic things, so things like video editing, that's not particularly basic, this can sort of handle that somewhat well, but it becomes very slow very quickly and that's very frustrating as a video editor. Gaming, this is not a laptop for gaming, but if you're in really into games, you probably already know that. Photo editing, graphic design, yeah, it sort of works if your workflow is very basic, but if you're trying to import any reasonable size stuff onto Lightroom or do any kind of manipulations in Photoshop, it's gonna start slowing down. And if this is the laptop that you're gonna be using for the next three or four years, you don't want it to be slowing down doing any of the basic things that you're gonna be doing feasibly in that time. And so the question to be asking isn't, is this a good laptop? Because obviously it's a great laptop and there's tons of reviews talking about how amazing this is. And actually for the first time since 2012, now when someone asks me, Ali, what laptop should I get? My answer is gonna be just get a MacBook Air. And I haven't been able to say that for the last eight years because Apple has done all sorts of weird things to the MacBook lineup with the 12-inch MacBook and then the MacBook Pros and the weird butterfly keyboards and Windows laptops started to not suck beyond 2012. But now the MacBook Air is so good that this is now my default recommendation for a laptop once more. To be honest, the Microsoft Surface is very good as well. The Dell XPS is very good as well. There's all sorts of really good Windows laptops in this sort of price point that are very good. The question is, what do you want to use a laptop for? Because if you want to be doing any of this fancy stuff, you should probably shut out for a MacBook Pro but I'd probably wait right now until the 14 inch MacBook Pro comes out with the proper keyboard, because if you wanna get a proper keyboard, you'll need to get the 16 inch version, which costs like $2,500 minimum, and that's just too much money to spend on a laptop, unless you're like a genuine professional user. Anyway, so that was the discussion about kind of what we use a laptop for. Like I said, this is really good for basic stuff. Let's just break down a little bit of the kind of components of the laptop in case people care about that thing. So, you know, let's start with the keyboard. The keyboard is, Absolutely fantastic. I'm gonna do a typing test now, and in real time, you'll see how amazing this keyboard is. So. Oh, here we go. Look, 152 words per minute. I've been doing typing tests for a long time, and this was just the first one that I did today. I promise I haven't done multiple takes of this. Um, with my Apple Magic keyboard, with my kind of fancy colorful mechanical keyboard, the most I sort of get when I've been doing these tests for the last few days and testing on different keyboards has been about mid 140s words per minute. So maybe there was some element of luck there, but you know, that's a pretty high typing speed if I say so myself. So I am very attuned to what a good keyboard is. And this keyboard is freaking amazing. Like, I'm so glad that this is the keyboard of these things because with the old butterfly keyboards on the MacBook Pros, I didn't hate it that much and I could get some pretty reasonable typing speeds on that sort of 130, 140 words per minute. But as soon as I laid my fingers on this new keyboard mechanism that they introduced in the 13 inch Air and the 16 inch Pro, I was like, oh my God, I now know what I've been missing. This is incredible. Secondly, the trackpad. Back in the day, back in 2012, Apple laptops were the only ones that had decent trackpads. In that time, things have changed and you know, Windows laptops now have decent trackpads as well, but this is just as good a trackpad, if not better than it's been for the last pretty much decade. So there's basically nothing to fault with this trackpad. Like it's responsive, it's great, the, the, the gestures are nice. It, it uses like force touch. So it, so when you click on it, it doesn't, you like, you aren't actually clicking. It's just kind of giving you some haptic feedback, but these trackpads have been doing that for years. They, you know, if it's, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Like the trackpad is just, as good as it's always been. Thirdly, let's talk about the screen, and the screen is just 
absolutely fine. It's a retina display. It's got like a 2560 by 1440 resolution, I think. 400 nits of brightness, which who really knows what these numbers mean, but basically 400 nits is bright, but not very bright. So if you're using it outside in absolutely broad daylight, bright sunlight, you might not be able to see very clearly, but it's absolutely bright enough for most, uh, like 98% of other use cases, which is absolutely fine. And it's a retina display. It still has slightly annoyingly large bezels, which if you look at modern Windows laptops, sometimes they don't, but hey, you know, maybe they'll update the design for that next time. But yeah, the screen is just, it's just fantastic. Fourthly, the ports. This is, I suppose, one disadvantage of it. You've only got two USB-C ports, but to be honest, for most people and for most use cases, two USB-C ports is more than enough. Most people with MacBooks or with any sort of USB-C devices are gonna be using one of these dongles. This is what I connect various USB accessories to, but this goes in a USB port on this MacBook Pro. For someone like me, two USB ports is a bit annoying because often I use all four of these ones up on my 15 inch MacBook Pro. So I've got this connected to this huge ass monitor. I've got this one connected to wired ethernet going all the way through my apartment to plug in so I can stream at decent kind of gigabits per second. Uh, I've got one USB dongle and I've got another USB-C hard drive connection. That's probably more ports than most normal people would need to use. So two USB ports is absolutely reasonable. We also, interestingly, have a headphone jack. Yeah, I mean, honestly, can't really remember the last time I had to use a wired pair of headphones, but if you're one of those old school people, you've got the headphone jack there. The speakers, speakers are very reasonable. There's other videos on YouTube where they do tests of speakers. I don't think you can really do a test of speakers because then it also depends on microphone quality and it also depends on what, what's going through your own speakers. There's all sorts of different issues with that. But yeah, the speakers are fine. If you're gonna watch an immersive movie or something, you should probably wear headphones or use external speakers. To be honest, that's gonna be true regardless of what laptop you get. And you know, for watching YouTube videos or watching my classes on Skillshare.com, link in the video description, um, the speakers are absolutely fine. Microphone wise, yeah, microphone is reasonable. Apparently they're pretty good these days. So this is a test of the microphone on the MacBook Air and recording on the Voice Memos app. And this is what the microphone sounds like from this $500 microphone setup that I'm using kind of up the top. So you can hear for yourself. Again, the microphone is very reasonable for doing basic things like FaceTime and Zoom and remote working and all that kind of stuff. And then there's the webcam. The webcam is a bit crap. It's 720p. I noticed this when I was FaceTiming my mum yesterday and earlier today. And you know, I'm, I'm used to having a super high quality camera on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, uh, front facing and back facing. So FaceTime is super HD on, on the iPhone. When doing Zoom calls, I'm used to having this Logitech 1080p HD camera, like webcam, but this is about 50 pounds. This is kind of kind of a bit crap. I mean, let's show what this would look like. So yeah, this is kind of what the webcam looks like. You can see there's loads of noise, loads of rain in the background, but I mean, it's a webcam. What do you use a webcam for? No one really needs to see your face in full HD, like super HDR when you're on a Zoom call, unless you just want to do that for fun. So it gets the job done. I would like it if the webcam were a little bit better, but hey, we can't have it all sadly. And now let's talk about the only thing I dislike about this, and that is the thermal performance is a little bit annoying. And by that, I mean that as you start doing kind of more intensive sort of tasks on this, you know, having loads and loads of tabs open or trying to edit a photo in Lightroom or having like Chrome and Safari and Slack and Zoom open at the same time, doing this sort of multiple application thingy, the processor gets very hot and you can download add-ons like Turbo Boost Switcher to check what the what the temperature of the processor is. And I was finding that this processor, the i3 version, the dual core version, was easily getting up to 100 degrees Celsius, especially when I was sitting on the sofa with this in my lap, kind of sitting on my black jeans with the jeans sort of obscuring the air vents, which is often like the position that I would use a laptop in. And I was finding that the fans were getting annoyingly loud. Now, this is only really a problem if you're gonna be stretching the laptop and you're gonna be kind of using it on a surface where the thermals are not, where kind of the air vents are covered up. So like if you're wearing jeans or something and using it in your lap. But I think that is a scenario that a lot of people are using the laptop in. And honestly, if this fan issue wasn't a thing, Basically, the reason it happens is because like something's happening on the insides of the MacBook and there's other YouTube videos that explain this, but it basically means that the efficiency of heat transfer to the outside environment is not very good. And so the processor tends to heat, it tends to heat up. And in order to kind of make it cool down a bit, the fans have to spin really, really, really loudly. And I'm just not really used to hearing loud laptop fans. Like unless I'm streaming and editing and doing loads of stuff on this MacBook Pro, I just don't hear even a hint of fan noise. And yet we're doing kind of basic things on the MacBook Air. I was hearing some fan noise. So 
There are ways around it. You can use an add-on like Turbo Boost Switcher to disable Turbo Boost, which keeps the processor power down a little bit. That means it does get a little bit slower if you're really, really taxing it. It's one of those issues that's the only negative thing I can really think of with this laptop. Apart from that, everything is fantastic. And in fairness, you know, I was using this all evening on the sofa, like over there in my lap, and I didn't hear a fan once, even without using the add-on. So it's it seems to kind of vary depending on what you're doing, but the fan issue is a little bit annoying. So if you really, really don't like this, the idea of hearing a fan noise occasionally, maybe this isn't the laptop for you. So that was all the features. Let's talk about recommended configurations now. And this starts at 999, so basically $1,000 but you can knock off $100 or £100 off the price tag if you're a student. So the base model, if you're a student, is £900 or $900. But the base model has the i3 processor, which is basically dual core, so it only has two cores. But if you pay an, an extra £100 or $100, you upgrade to the i5 processor, which has four cores. And it's very much worth upgrading that because it just sort of future-proofs the laptop a little bit more, and it's only £100 for that upgrade. The other thing that I would get is I would upgrade the RAM from 8 gigabytes to 16 gigabytes, and that does cost $200 or £200. But as we said, we're going to be keeping this device for the next three or four years at least. And upgrading the RAM is one of the best things that you can do to increase the longevity of a laptop. So overall, the total cost of this would be $1,299, so $1,299 or £1,300, minus £100 if you're a student, so basically £1,200, quid, £1,200, £1,200, whatever currency you want to convert that into. So that would be my recommended configuration. I would suggest that if you can't afford £1,200, then maybe don't go for a MacBook Air. Maybe consider a Windows laptop instead, because you can get cheaper options that do basically the same thing. If you're getting a MacBook Air, you're getting it because you like Mac OS as an operating system and probably because you have other Apple devices that synergize nicely with a MacBook kind of as your, as your main laptop. So that's what I would suggest, basically the minimum price that you upgrade this should be if again, you know, as we said, we want it to last three or four years. I would be tempted to buy one of these and if you're in the market for a laptop, you really can't go wrong. This is the one to get. Not being paid by Apple to say this, I wish I were. I wish Apple sponsored my videos, but unfortunately they don't despite what everyone thinks. This is just really solid. And I've been using MacBook since 2012 when I first got the MacBook Air and they basically never let me down. I'll put a playlist over here that has some other videos about kind of iPad versus MacBook type things. And also a video about my favorite apps to install on macOS that you should definitely check out. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.